Welcome back everyone to chapter one, <laughs> volume six of Ruby called Argus Limited. I'm sorry, well, I don't know why I said it that weird. Um, but yeah, we're back into Ruby finally. I took about a week off. Um, and so just to date this video a little bit, today is the 18th of October. We have about two, three weeks, I think, till Ruby volume seven happens. So. We're gonna pump through this. Uh, I might be doing this binging in two days. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I got the whole weekend off, so I'm like, let's just do it. Uh, we'll see how much I, I feel after this episode. But yeah, I'm excited. Um, I can't wait. Um, I have no really idea. Um, I, I do know that volume seven is when they're gonna finally get to Atlas. So I'm assuming this volume is gonna be flashback history lessons slash traveling slash uh, hijinks from going from they're in uh, Mistral and then they're going to Atlas so something happens along the way that stalls in a little bit because we know at the end of volume 5 they said hey we gotta go to Atlas and then all of a sudden you know we can't so something going on and we'll just find out now let's get into this Rooster Teeth presents our Rooster Teeth series. <laughs> Starring Rooster Teeth. <laughs> oh shit, we're gonna have a train sequence? We're on top of the train, there's Grim following. Looks like we're gonna get a train. Are those Griffin? Hold up, what's that? There's a Sphinx. I like that design. <laughs> Ruby, <laughs> stop being cocky. Team Juniper. Yeah! I heard they're orange now, aren't they? <laughs> they're Team Orange because of Oscar. Ooh. Ooh. The animation always just subtly changes. Like, you can always just notice a little bit more refinery, refined to it. Like, for this one, I see, like, the pink smoke of uh, Nora's grenades. Oh my god, Weiss, come on. He turned his back on us. He just... Step away from my throne. We have work to do. We? Everyone knows what you did. You abandoned your brothers at Haven. Step away from my... We are not taking orders from you anymore. We heard Shit. you folded the moment you got sass from the Belladonna girl. I guess she's got more control over you than you... What? No. Yeah. There's actual blood too. I think I, uh, right, the, the character show was the first time we saw blood. Jeez, the, the mad king. Girl. God. Blake. Adam, bloody Adam. I wonder what a semblance is. Something to do with like charging power. Shio. It's been two weeks since the attack. Can't go to Vale. The official report states that the plot to destroy Mistral CCT Tower was thwarted by Gira Belladonna and the Faunus Militia Group from Menagerie. A huntsman and some students coincidentally visiting the headmaster were also able to lend some assistance. Unfortunately. Leonardo Lionheart lost his life while trying to defend his school. And those responsible for organizing the attack managed to escape. As I'm sure you can guess, there's a lot more to this report than I'm willing to say in this letter. But for now, what I'm trying to say is that we're on our way to Atlas. Is he right into Ironwood? There's yeah. a good chance James. we'll get there before this letter does, but in case we don't, I need you to know that we're bringing a lot more than bad news with 
see you soon. A lot more than bad news. Hey, what's with the running? No, what's with the standing? It's almost time! Girl! No semblances in the, in the train station. And? Ah! What an absolute waste of time <laughs> to get me. You'll have to wait and see. No fair. Oh, I can't believe we're taking the train to Argus. Beautiful northern coastline. You think it's too early for beach season? <laughs> Unfortunately. But he really wants to closer to Atlas. Well, I'm glad you're all excited, but I don't think you appreciate the trouble I went through to leave Atlas. I know you're yeah. wise, but trust us. <laughs> That's awkward. Team Ruby won't leave your side for a second. I promise. No Insert her running away. With us around. Who the hell are these two? And you are. Uh... <laughs> Why, D and Dudley, of course. The Argus Limited's very own huntsman. We'll be keeping everyone safe as we pass through grim territory. But for a generous tip, we can make sure your passenger car gets extra special attention. Should things get dangerous. <laughs> hey, I got a tip for you. Huh? Buzz off. Looks like Mistral's really scraping the bottom of the barrel these days. <laughs> hey, you're talking to a, a professional <laughs> huntsman. Well, it seems like one of you heroes left the staff entrance to the caboose wide open. Huh? Be ashamed to lose your job before it even started. I, I didn't do it. <sighs> Come on, dummy. Are they supposed to be Tweedledee and Tweedledum? <laughs> I do hope those weren't Beacon graduates. <laughs> you know, sometimes the burden of saving the world feels overwhelming. But then people like that come along and make me grateful that it's our job and not theirs. <laughs> So, you kids ready to go? Bike all loaded up? Yep, just waiting on Blake. As usual. Oh, where is she? I still don't feel like I deserve the oh, freedom Ilya. your family granted me. Go you with know, them. You're going to have to get over it, Ilya. Saving Haven had a huge impact on how Faunus are seen in Mistral. Now, it's up to you all to take the progress and keep running with it. Go with right. them, Ilya. The White Fang may have been a failure, but with your father starting up a new movement, I've got more faith than ever before. Thank you, Blake, for everything. I wish you didn't have to go. I know, but my team needs me. We're going to track down the people responsible for the attack on Haven and the fall of Beacon. Always trying to save the world. More than you realize. Hey. I know your parents already saw you off, but where's... Son? Oh, he's right here. Is he going with? What? You didn't think I was going to miss your big send-off, did you? He definitely overslept and hey, absolutely almost missed this. Neptune. <laughs> hey, Blake. Now, would you hurry up? Need I remind you, we have our own trip to plan. Oh. I didn't know Ilya was going to be here. I'll give you two a moment. Oh my god. Hey, Playboy. Uh, almost didn't see you there. Smack him down. The, the camouflage? Wrong tree. <laughs> They'll figure it out. <laughs> so, she lails me. Find a vacuo. That's right. Seeing you reunited with the rest of Team Ruby really made me realize something. I'm like the worst team leader ever. Me and the boys were cool with a little hiatus, but we gotta make up for lost time. Shade Academy's not dealing with any problems like Haven right now. Plus, that means I can show the guys around my old stomping grounds. I have to admit, I think I was kind of getting used to having you around. I go where I'm needed. <laughs> and you don't need me anymore. Aww. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds sad. <laughs> Look, despite the drama and the fighting and the numerous attempts on my life, I had a lot of fun. But you're with who you're supposed to be now. You can go too. Son, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to thank you enough. Let's go. Instead, let's get all the teams so back together. <laughs> Team Sun, yeah, know, let's go to Atlas. But you can do it with them. We need a whole squad, okay? In the future? Who knows? I've got a feeling you haven't seen the last of me. Good. I certainly hope not. Me too.
I don't know, man. It feels like you're just letting her go. It was never about that, Brainiac. Besides, now that your leader's back and hardened from battle, oh, I've got God. to focus all of my time into getting you boys ready for the wastelands. <sighs> what? <laughs> I've seen this character before. I don't know much about her. But she's an important character. I know that. <laughs> Alright girls, I think it's time for an official team exercise. Who wants to play video games? I mean, if you want me to kick your butt, yeah, sure. Let me grab my scroll. Here, let me help you with that. Blake, you don't have to do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm fine. We're gonna be fine. It's just gonna be a bit before things are back to normal. But... I am glad we're all back together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How touching. Oh, hey, Uncle Crow. <laughs> you want to play too? <laughs> Kick your butts? Sure. What was that? Exactly what it sounds like. Just my luck. It's not yours. Grab your weapons. Hmm. I'm gonna get a fight scene. Sorry. Oh, so now we're catching up. Is that what's going on? The beginning was like a flash forward, now we're in present time. Team Orange, get up there too. Shall I? No, I'm keeping control. <clears throat> What's going on? Get topside and let's go. Grim attack, though. That's the question. They'd be attacked, attracted to negative emotions. So, is someone sabotaging the train, basically, or what? Nice. That's pretty awesome. What the heck? It's a chimera. The chimeras are bigger, and then there's like sphinxes also. I think that's what it is. Hey, what are you doing? Why is it always something? How can I help? You can get that idiot to shut off the turrets. They're just drawing the grim toward the passengers. Right. Oh. Damn, he's got the whole lamp on his body? I mean, I guess, because it's Oz, but still. I just feel like that's <laughs> playing it pretty close to the chest. Another one down. Stop! have to lure the Grim to the back. What does it matter if they're dead? 
Um, it's probably a bigger one now. This Chimera. What's going on? Where are they going? Tana! Huh? boy. Now that doesn't actually look too bad. I said, turn those damn things off. Those things are keeping us alive. Us, sure. But they're putting a bad on us. In charge here. Forgive me if I'm not exactly reassured. Take it easy, Just kind of... Get off me! Look, you bozos have been doing your job. Ren, we need Maybe some calming we'll emotions. Us. Please just shut up the turrets. Trust us. We know what we're doing. Fine. Ren, could you use your semblance to mask everyone on this train? With the guns off and emotions hidden, they might lose track of us. I've never attempted to affect this many people. Yeah, that's a lot. You've never had Jean's help before. Hmm? Yes! You could amplify your aura. Mass. Yeah. Yes. That's an all right plan. May I? Don't look so worried, Ren. You can totally do this. I'm afraid there's one complication. Grim are also attracted uh. to this. What's that? None of your business. Buzz, are you serious? Why wouldn't you tell us that? I... It doesn't matter right now. Every second we're on board this train, we're putting everyone else in danger. Get the passengers to the front cars. You'll still mask the emotions and kill the turrets. We just can't come with you. If we cut the back cars with us and the relic on them, we can be with the Grim. No. We just make sure the rest of the train makes it safely to Argus. No. You just got back together. Only if you'll promise you'll meet us there. <laughs> promise. I know the show is about Ruby, but like, <laughs> I want the whole team. I want all of that. Ruby plus Oscar plus Crow. Is Crow going with them also? Yeah, he's right there. And then Nora and yeah, those two are gonna be. Yes. Yeah, boys. Do this, Oscar. Yeah. There was like odds pins fighting style though. Oscar. Okay, yeah, you guys gotta take down this Chimera one. It's the big boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, this team 
work though. Supposed to go to the other trains. What are you doing? Uh, the episode's over? Okay, let's hear this opening. Is that supposed to the moon? There's Oz. Who are these people? Are those past incarnations? Sean versus Oz? Some mystery person here. Okay. Yeah, that grandma's in the the lineup so it looks like she's a major character okay interesting opening or <laughs> interesting uh season premiere i'll say um yeah just since we're uh that was the last thing i i, I we were focusing on um the opening itself um the song it was fine um i don't really i'm gonna have to listen to it a couple times to really figure out what the tone of this season is going to be because I, I just felt i don't know i didn't like have like an immediate like this is how it's going to be. Like, it just felt, like, very trepidatious. I, fe I felt a mystery, a sense of, like, unease. Um, but maybe that's the feeling I'm supposed to get. In which case, that's not really good for this season. <laughs> but um, as far as visually go, I love that, the, the, the opening for the season. It's one of my favorites, to be honest. Like, I just love the, the mist effects and, like, the different uh, side swipes and, like, the way that they all appear and stuff. Um, the transitions between different... Uh, you know foreshadowings i really like that this this opening so um i just can't wait um so yeah the grandma lady the blue grandma i don't know i know one thing about her i think but i don't want to say it <laughs> just because but i if you know if you guys have watched the season already then you probably know what i'm thinking of um but yeah other than that i don't really know anything about i don't know her name i just know like one characteristic about her um so i'm excited for that um and just sort of learning more about that um there was some sort of blonde woman next to a statue of oz it looked like and then there was also like three or four other male figures before it went to oz ozpin and then he turned into oscar so i'm uh, th that to me, to me that signals it's like the predecessor oz's you know, like the, the the resurrections, the descendants before him, before it was Ozpin, and then now it's Oscar. So I'm curious to see. It sounds like we're going to get a lot of lore and history and backstory on him this season. And then speaking of Oz, we're also getting, um, from the opening, it looks like there's some sort of confrontation or at least like a clash of ideologies between John and Oz, which will be interesting. Um, there's a lot of character, there's a lot of, um, not character conflict because that's very big, but um. You know, uh, like inner party turmoil, uh, if you want to use like uh, tabletop terms. Um, there's a lot of like 
they had those two like sort of being angsty with each other and then they had um they sort of set it up in this episode but there's like not tension but you know blake was trying to be overly nice to yang and yang's like look i get what you're doing but you know this isn't gonna help you know we're just gotta it's just gonna take some time to sort of get past what happened um but we'll get back to normal eventually and so they also showed that in the opening a little bit with them sitting next to each other and then Yang looks the other direction away from her and then we see the, the sort of mirror image of Adam. And so, um, yeah, I said it before, but I, I do know there's some, I know, I know, I know about that, that sort of dynamic, um, the ending of this volume, but I can't wait to see the lead up to it. Um, we got a little glimpse of Adam this episode and sort of how deep he's devolved into this monster now. Um, he's attacking his own white fang. He's just, he's turning into full spite, just like Blake said, um, you know, he's the embodiment of spite. He's, he doesn't even care about the white fang anymore. He just cares that he's been wronged by Blake and by Yang, um, in, and the rest of the group, you know, that he's just, he doesn't, he doesn't have any allegiances anymore. Um, we saw a, a little bit of the rest of the Salem's posse. Um, <laughs> I, just, uh, I, I I really want to know more about Watts. I want to learn his story. We've we've seen we've had a, a volume with Tyrion. We've had a volume with Hazel a little bit. So, you know, he was he had more like the ending of volume five, but we still have seen him. And then obviously Cinder, we've been with her since the beginning, but we haven't really seen Watts too much. He's been in a couple episodes here and there. He's been, you know, we see like you see his smarmy kind of sarcastic thing. Um, I wanted to mention this. I've been thinking about Ruby <laughs> a lot, but um, in one of the, I was just thinking in my off time um, about how um, Watts is he based on like Sherlock? I feel like <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think like maybe like Watson. You know Watts, um, and then I think his first name is Arthur. But I know Sherlock is his first name Sherlock Holmes. So I don't really know why I think of Arthur Watts being Watson I don't know I just it, it, I don't know if it's been confirmed or if we even know about Watts yet um because we do know he's he went to Atlas so we might not even see him this volume uh, he might be in volume seven coming up um but yeah it was just something on my mind I'm like maybe he's based on Sherlock because he kind of has that <laughs> he's a very gentlemanly appearance um and I I don't know he's just so enig enigmatic and I, I just want to learn more about him um but yeah, and then um, it was small here. Um, I was, I, I think I read somewhere that this volume is going to touch on the moon and more more backstory about that as well. Um, they showed it in the opening, sort of, uh, you know, I think Weiss like turned all, turned them into like a snowball and then it turned into the moon and then it's the moon shattered. Um, so I'm curious to see what we're going to learn about that, how that relates to anything that's going on right now. Um, is Salem on the moon? Is that where her headquarters is? Um what else happened? Um, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. That's sort of sad about them. Um, I love that moment with Jean and Ren, how he amplified Ren's semblance, because I, that was my first thing when, when last volume they confirmed. It wasn't the fact that he's healing Weiss, it's the fact that he's amplifying her aura. And so I, I immediately thought, oh, well, he could probably, like, you know, amplify Yang's Berserker Rage. Um, he could probably do Weiss's semblance, and I think he did that um, last volume. I that's, the, that's why the Queen Lancer was around. Um, but yeah, they, they really played with that here and they're, they're amplifying Ren's semblance, which is awesome because, you know, his semblance is like a counter grim tactic. And so it's a perfect scenario for him to use it. Um, I'm sad that they're not going to be here. At least, um, they're not going to be with the rest of the group. Um, so I'm talking about John, Nora and Ren. Uh, they, they stuck along with the train with the rest of the civilians. So, um, we'll probably see them eventually, but uh, I'm just sad that they're, you know, they got reunited and now they're, they're split up again. It makes me sad. Um, there's one other thing I want to talk about. Hmm. Mm. Oh, in the opening, um, they had some sort of cloaked figure. And then I think I saw Torchwick's, Roman Torchwick's hat fly off. So I'm wondering what that has to do with, um, yeah, because I thought it was going to be, maybe it was like Cinder or something, but I don't know why that would, unless I'm seeing things wrong and that wasn't Roman Torchwick's hat, but it looked like it. So is it Neo or something? Is it Roman? Is he alive still? Because they showed him, showed the figure fighting also, but I couldn't really see the weapon. It looked like a stick of some sort. And so that would be, Roman has a cane, but I don't know. Um, 
yeah, I'm just curious to see what's going to happen this volume. Um, I'm expecting some backstory, like I said, some more lore drops. Obviously, some sort of confrontation with Adam. He's sort of the big threat right now on the table. Everyone else is kind of licking their wounds still, but, um, you know, Adam's very much a real threat right now. So, um, yeah, I've rambled long enough. Thanks for watching this chapter with me, everyone. Uh, let me know in the comments below, did I get stuff wrong or what you want to correct me on or if I missed anything in this uh, this, uh, this first <laughs> this first chapter. Um, again, uh, the, I'm, I'm hoping to at least record everything by the time Volume 7 comes out. I don't know how when it's going to get up on YouTube, but um, note that I am working on this volume um, as soon as I can. And I, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll talk with you guys in the comments below and see you in the next video.